Today we're going to discuss the typical cell wall and the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacterium. Most prokaryotes have a cell wall that will provide the cell with shape, support, and even protection from cell lysis. The typical cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan, a complex polysaccharide composed of two sugars, N-acetyl glucosamine, referred to as NAG, and N-acetyl muramic acid, referred to as NAM. The two sugars form polysaccharide chains, which will then be connected by amino acids. So let's look here at the polysaccharide chains. Again, it's made up of the two sugars, N-acetyl muramic acid, referred to as NAM, and N-acetyl glucosamine, referred to as NAG. Notice how the chains are formed up by alternating the two different sugars, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG. To make a peptidoglycan sheet, we have to use multiple polysaccharide chains cross-linked by amino acids. Notice where the cross bridges are formed. The cross bridges form between the N-acetylmuramic acids. The entire structure then is referred to as peptidoglycan or peptidoglycan sheet. The main difference between the gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial cell wall is the number of sheets used. In gram-positive, it has a thick layer of peptidoglycan composed of many sheets, whereas in a gram-negative, it's going to be a thin layer of peptidoglycan composed of only one or two sheets. So let's look closely at the gram-positive bacteria. Gram-positive bacterial cells have a relatively thick layer of peptidoglycan, and they use tocoic acids. Wall tocoic acids will be used to hold the individual layers or individual sheets of peptidoglycan together. The lipotocoic acid is going to be used to anchor the entire peptidoglycan structure to the underlying membrane. So this is our typical gram-positive bacterium. It has two parts to its cell envelope, the underlying cell membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer, and it has a thick peptidoglycan layer. If we look here at the peptidoglycan layer, we notice that it is composed of multiple sheets of peptidoglycan. The individual sheets of peptidoglycan are being held together, or glued together, by wall tocoic acids. The entire peptidoglycan structure here, this thick layer of peptidoglycan, is then held to the underlying cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer, using lipotocoic acids. And so that's our gram-positive bacterial structure. Let's compare that to the gram-negative bacteria. In gram-negative bacteria, the cell has a relatively thin layer of peptidoglycan. That peptidoglycan layer is actually going to be sandwiched between the cell membrane and an outer membrane. The peptidoglycan layer is going to be anchored to the outer membrane using a structure known as lipoproteins. And then on either side of that peptidoglycan layer, we're going to find something known as periplasmic spaces. So let's look at the typical gram-negative bacterium. Here you'll see that it has three parts to its cell envelope. It has the phospholipid bilayer, or its cell membrane. It has a thin layer of peptidoglycan, and then it has an outer membrane. So here is our cell membrane. Here is our outer membrane. Sandwiched between the two is the peptidoglycan layer. The peptidoglycan layer, as you can see, is kind of floating between the two membranes in an area referred to as the periplasmic space. The peptidoglycan layer is anchored to the outer membrane in gram-negative bacteria, and it uses something known as lipoproteins. Now this outer membrane is a unique structure to the gram-negative bacteria, so let's look at it a little bit closer. Notice how it is a phospholipid bilayer but it's got two unique structures in it. First, it has a lipopolysaccharide, LPS, and this is going to help to provide the gram-negative bacteria with some toxicity. It also has 
some integral proteins embedded within it. These integral proteins, known as porins, will allow for there to be channels through that outer membrane so that materials can move in and out. So that gives us our outer membrane, our cell membrane, and in between them a thin layer of peptidoglycan, and that is the typical gram-negative bacteria. Now let's compare the gram-positive to the gram-negative. The gram-positive bacteria has two parts to its cell envelope. It has a cell membrane and a thick layer of peptidoglycan made up of multiple sheets. In the gram-negative bacteria, it has three layers to its cell envelope. It has the cell membrane, a thin layer of peptidoglycan consisting of only one or two sheets, and then it has this third structure, the outer membrane. The outer membrane will have the LPS and the porins within it. And that concludes our discussion on the gram-positive versus gram-negative bacterium.